Hello friends, this is Scott in my home office. It's a hot day today. It's June 2nd. It's 92, 93 degrees outside. I took a little time this morning and I filmed an update video for my home garden. Uh, the last update we did was April 21st, I believe, and a lot has changed. Um, you know, I used the back to Eden garden method and when I first, you know, started this vlog, uh, it was very dormant. Everything was brown and all you saw was wood chips. Now, from each video on, you're going to see more and more growth, more and more lusciousness and greenness, and uh, we'll start eating stuff. Like right now, we're in the we're just tailing out the lettuce time of the year, and we're in the strawberries right now, and a lot of other stuff will be coming. Just wanted to kind of update you a little bit before we get into the garden tour, what's happening at the other gardens. Uh, project garden number one, I was over there yesterday. The radishes are about ready to go to seed. Some of them already are. Uh, kind of a mixed bag results. I tried some daikon radishes, real big long ones, and they didn't do well. I don't think the soil is fertile enough at this point. But we had some pretty good French breakfast and other types of radishes, so I'm pretty happy with that. Homeowner came home and grabbed some onions, grabbed some walla wallas out of the garden, and I uh, really enjoyed them. And so he, uh, he didn't like the size of the radishes because I didn't thin them too well. So they're not the hugest, or biggest radishes, I should say hugest. I don't know if that's a word or not. <laughs> but uh, anyway, he... Uh, he had to give me a little critique about the size of the radishes, but they were tasty, but he really enjoyed the onions, and they're just starting to bulb up now. In project garden number two, uh, that's the one where we're helping a buddy with his yard and put, doing mostly a lot of bark and pulling weeds and, and mostly uh, edging and landscaping kind of a project. Um, you know, we took the trees down a couple weeks ago, and then I did check on the garden yesterday, and they did the stump grinders did come, and they did grind the stumps down for the two big uh, trees that we took out there. So we'll be getting back over there and finishing up the front yard, and then we still have lots of work to do in the backyard. Uh, as a little side note, I got a little injury, a uh, basketball injury last week, and I think I cracked some ribs. So I'm a little bit slow, uh, I'm feeling a little bit better, but it's, uh, it's starting to halt my progress a little bit on some things. So to decide today's video, I would take it a little easy and, uh, and just tell you about what's going on in my garden at home, and I uh, hope you enjoy it because it's really starting to come together. And you can kind of see what the back deed method will do for you in water conservation and and uh, just just soil health and uh, plant health. So here we go. Let's take a look. Starting out today, like we did last video, we're starting with the garlic bed. This is a raised uh, red wiggler bed that was used to raise red wigglers, but I've just put it outside and used it as a, as a raised growing container. Garlic's really tall. Uh, if you look in the very back, you'll see some uh, wheat sprouting back there. That's where uh, some of my weeds, their lookalikes, uh, have been able to get away from me a little bit. Here's the onions. Uh, they're starting to bulb up a little bit. Those are the onion sets that I had extra from the project garden, number one. They're growing nicely. They tend to, you know, when I put them this close together, they get all, the tops get all jumbled up. But they tend to grow some pretty good onions. So now we're headed down the pear tree lane. This is the Asian pear. You see some fruits there developing. It's coming along nicely. A couple of years ago, I really whacked the crap out of this tree and topped it, and and because uh, the the fruit was getting you know very numerous, but they were getting small. And usually, they're a good size apple uh, size fruit, and they were getting a lot smaller than that overall. So, since I cut it, uh, it's been much better. Now down here is a little pumpkin plant that something's starting to munch on. It's going to get a lot of shade here, but I'm hoping that they'll get enough sun that this will run down the side of the yard and kind of create a living mulch too, along with the uh, wood chips. Here's a dwarf peach tree. Uh, it looks like it's doing well. As you can see, as you peek in here, uh, we can see if we can see some fruit. There's some coming up. There's quite a bit on here. Now the other dwarf peach, I think, does not have as much fruit, and so I'm gonna have to really keep an eye on that one. But here we go, there's a better look at the fruit. Should be tasty this year. We always get a bumper crop, it seems like. Now we'll keep going scanning down the row here. A little blurry. Now here's my most disappointing apple tree. This is a festooned apple, and it is getting huge. It's very healthy. I need to prune it. This is the time of the year that uh, once the fruit's set, that you, you should prune it just to put all the growth in the fruit. But it didn't put on any fruit this year, so I'm a little disappointed. Here's the other dwarf pear, and I don't see fruit on this one very much. So I've got to like say this one may be, may be having an off year, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Now here is raspberries, and there's Mr. Lincoln following me around today. And as we go up this tree here, there's the pear tree that has full-size pears on it. 
and it will have full-size pears on it. Uh, it's getting nice and tall. Still has a lot of growth to do, but it's uh, flowered great this year. It's got, there's tons of fruit on there. Let me zoom in a little bit and see if we can find some fruit to show you what it looks like. Uh, there's several, there are some. There's several varieties of, of pears that are grafted on this tree, and uh, I don't remember all the names of them all, but they're all, they're all fairly similar in taste and, and size, and they're, again, they're regular sized fruit. So here we're at the side of my patio, you see the earth boxes uh, where I've planted some uh, eggplant and different types of peppers in here, and they do great. I mean, you have to use fertilizer, but uh, I always get a bumper crop out of those two little boxes. Scanning back, you see all these tall green here is all horseradish. Again, you harvest the roots, but uh, these plants are nice and tall, getting plenty of water and they're doing really well. I've got uh, raspberries along here. And I had a die off of raspberries last year, and so they're not nearly as good as they usually are. So I need to really uh, fertilize these beds and get them back on track. But we'll get some raspberries this year, it looks like. Uh, they're just growing. As you see along the fence, there's a bald spot, and I think that's from the tree roots next door. There's some big pine trees. Now here's the chicken friends. Uh, they're all waiting to get fed. I forgot to feed them before I started the video, so they're all kind of hanging out, waiting for me to do what I'm supposed to be doing this morning. But they're all out getting a little sun and, and enjoying the weather, waiting for their little snack. And here's a first look at my pole beans. Uh, that I'm trellising up this metal wire and it looks like I've got six or seven or maybe eight plants that have germinated. The rest of the seeds haven't come up, so uh, I need to replant. And it's not uncommon that I have to plant a couple times to get a full germination. Here's a zucchini. I've got tucked on the corner in a very sunny spot in the top tier of my yard. There's some daisies that are just going to be coming on. Got lots of columbine. And as I stroll down the side of the the pen, there's my uh, chicken compost. There's a squash plant. I'm gonna, hopefully I'll get enough sun there, but it's a very shady spot. I need to prune some more trees, but it's kind of dangerous at this point because uh, I've got to drop them, uh, the limbs and there's fencing underneath it, so I don't want to break everything. Here's my peas. They're all coming on really nicely. Uh, they're flowering. And here is some yellow columbine. I'll scan back and forth a little bit just to kind of give different perspective. But as you see, the wood chips, really kelp conserve moisture. I have bubblers, waters in this section, and uh, they flood, kind of flood irrigate. So as we head up, there's some eggplant I planted and some peppers in front of the peas. I think I'll give you a shot of some developing pea pods. There's one, I think I can see it there. Now the bamboo is looking a little ragged. Uh, they, the city fixed the fence behind my yard and uh, the bamboo has looked really rugged since they did that. So I wonder if they poisoned it or did something to it because of, it uh, doesn't look very healthy this year, but it'll it'll bounce back. Now, as we stroll on up the peas, you can see the flowers, and there is a pod. Uh, you get a better look at the pod. This will be some sweet peas here in the next uh, week or so, it looks like. Now, I planted all my brassicas and cauliflower, and there's some cucumbers against the wall there. Red cabbage, um, Brussels sprouts, right against the potato bins, there are some Brussels sprouts. Up here, we've got the roses. Those are climbing roses, so I need to, I tore out a trellis where these two climbing roses, the pink and the red, would climb over and uh, I gotta build something different so they can uh, they can climb. These are daylilies, and then we've got some salvias and some columbines, and then we're back to looking at the potatoes. They've all grown out of the potato bins. They're doing really well. I do need to fill the bins with dirt so that they keep on growing all the way to the top. And the brassicas, those are cauliflower plants. Uh, there's a little bit of yellowing of leaves, so I've got a little bit of the bark mixed into the soil, which you don't want to do because it does rob nitrogen as the, as the soil's trying to break down that, uh, that carbon material. But when this fills in, it's going to be a nice little uh, kind of a hedge full of brassicas. Potatoes, again, look nice. They're doing, they look like they're doing great. And then back up to the top, we've got some daylilies and some more columbines, a couple different colors of columbines. And there's a good look at the salvia, more daylilies. These are apple trees. Um, as you notice, there's a lot of pruning to do. And at this time of the year, uh, I just wait till after they flower. And then in early summer, I go through and I prune, uh, making sure I'm not cutting off the fruit. But you see some nice poppies. Uh, we've got some pink poppies in front of us here. And then on the other side of that is the strawberry bed. And we have strawberries that are uh, in production right now. 
There's the biggest bell in your apple tree that I really need to get in there and prune. My tomatoes, they're not doing a whole lot yet. I need to get some fertility in them, it looks like. The peonies, they're looking pretty. There's one of them's actually starting to fall. The petals are falling off there. Then we got more daylilies. We have my paver walkway, flagstone walkway, I should say. Uh, there's some yellow columbine, a whole bunch. More daylilies, a little yellow and uh, kind of a salmon colored uh, columbine. Looking at that top tier. Now we're scanning back, and uh, again, daylilies are kind of everywhere in my yard, but they're, uh, they're easy to propagate. And these are the orange ones, and they will be taking over the yard here shortly with their blooms. They're one of the next ones to start. Scanning back around, back at the tomatoes in the cages. Need to, again, need to add some fertility, and I need to prune back the apple a little bit because it's getting some shade. And then as you look in here, you see some little dots of red. Those are the strawberries. Uh, we've got quite a few strawberries this year. They're not the biggest strawberries, but there uh, seems to be quite a few. I picked a nice little uh, container full today, and there'll be a bunch more tomorrow. So we'll, uh, we're enjoying these right now, but I do need to add some fertility. And there's my smaller espalier that I'm going to train more uh, professionally, along with this one once I get this one pruned out. And as we zoom in, you can see I finally got some apples on a, on a tree. I had a few last year, not too many. This year I had great blooms, and it looks like we've got a lot of apples, so I'm excited, uh, at least two trees anyway. I was always disappointed in some areas of the garden, and then there's always bounty in other areas, so can't complain too much on that. Now we're looking back uh, direction toward the busy street behind my house. There's uh, more spellier apples, a little bit better close up of the horseradish and the pink poppies. They're really pretty this year, very upright. Uh, sometimes they flop over, but they're, they're stronger and healthier this year. And as we scroll back around, there's some more daylilies, the flagstone paver patio or paver walkway. Can't remember what those plants are. And then we have some daisies in this area and salvia and the red hot pokers are behind them along with some more beautiful pink poppies. That's a trumpet vine uh, that'll have those nice orange flowers. As we swing back around you take a first look at my herb garden area and the whiskey barrel lettuce and radishes. There's some Swiss chard there, some thyme, some chives and chive flowers. There is parsley in there. There's some uh, tarragon, red Russian kale. Parsley's going to seed right there, as you can see. And then here's the sprig lettuce mix, and arugula mix, and it's going to seed. Uh, it's got beautiful little dainty flowers on it, though. It's, uh, it's pretty, still tasty. You can still eat it. And then up here, we have our Egyptian walking onions that are doing their Medusa thing. And, uh, get lots of production out of these plants. So you can eat every part of the plant from the roots to the, the bulbs that end up on the end of the leaves. So it's kind of a fun, fun plant, very prolific. As we scroll back around, there's rhubarb. Nice big rhubarb plant. It's gone to seed, so it's not, uh, it's done for the year. They just mine and bolt really quickly. Uh, so you gotta keep them cut or they just, they bolt. But that one's doing really well. Back to the red Russian kale. And move on up the path a little ways. There's a Swiss chard and some basil. There's a couple little basils along with the thyme right there and that's flowering right now. See little sunflowers throughout the yard that have been planted by the birds. Uh, little volunteers that'll turn into substantial plants. I tend to leave them alone until they get an area or if they're in an area that's a problem that I'll that I'll pull them out. Now here we have a little fairy garden area with some dainty little flowers on some ground cover. And then that's at the base of my blackberry patch. Over there along the fence is where raspberry should be growing all the way to the fence, but we had the die off last year. So there is a space on both sides of the, of the yard that have raspberries without much success there. So we go up the pathway, we have more horseradish. I tend to have horseradish too many places in the yard. It's a pretty invasive plant, but you know, you dig up the roots and you know, you, I don't think you can always totally get rid of it, but you can control it. See some coral bells, some daylilies, some roses, and then on the left is some grapes. We have a green table grape, and then we have a red 
juice grape and I'll train them back up on those wires. I cut them all the way back last year. There's some asparagus. Uh, I did hugel culture underneath all this before I brought in compost and manures and, and the wood chips. And so I don't know how that good that was for the asparagus, but there's a few of uh, the spears coming up. Back to the blackberry patch, lots of flowers, should have a very good harvest. I need to prune out some dead canes, but it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. You get a little close-up of some of the flowers there. And then we're going to zoom back over to the compost area. And I, this was an underground trampoline that I decided to make it into, a, into my compost area. So I kind of shrunk the sides with walls, added a little more growing space, and then added the brick to put just the double extra wide compost bin, and then gave myself some more planting room, and then a little uh, step walkway down to the to throw the compost. It's kind of nice to see the little sacks there. I can, I can hit this from my deck so I don't have to come all the way downstairs to throw it away. I can just chuck it off the deck. Now here's the raspberries coming down with some, I need to cut some of these weed trees. But the raspberries are small and uh, something's going on. I've got to figure that out. I'm not sure exactly what happened. As we scan back over the garden, it's, uh, it's looking pretty. Now we're back to the planting area next to where I have the barbecue and a little side patio and we're scanning back around lots of yellow columbine you'll see in here. We put our house plants outside and they're enjoying uh, getting a lot of sun and a lot more water. A couple of them aren't looking too good so we'll have to see how that goes. Hen and chicks are doing awesome. They love it here. Daylilies. And again this is the top view we showed you from the bottom but these are some of those uh, different colors of columbine. Have more types of flowers that'll come up. Uh, another big bed of hen and chicks. Salvia, daylilies, and then the red climbing roses. And then I've got some moss in this pathway, but it's never done really well there in between the two uh, paver patios. Those are climbing roses, so I need to figure that out. Uh, what I'm going to do is for structure, as you can see, a little bit of the uh, scotch moss there. And then we have some other pink climbing roses, which are definitely uh, blooming, or will be blooming nicely. We see some close-ups of those uh, buds. Had a little bit of aphid issues this year, so we'll have to see. And then in, in, under every tree, we seem to have a lot of hen and chicks. And then we have some miniature red roses. We have some lilies, some regular day lilies. And those will be coming on soon. There's some uh, volunteer um, plants in there, flowers, sunflowers, and then more columbines. And then we've got, I, I threw a random tomato in here. That's a Moscow, if you see it right there. That's one of my favorites. Uh, those are the Shasta daisies, zucchini, and then we're back to the horseradish. Well, that concludes today's video. Uh, the garden is really greening up, and every month you'll see it getting fuller and fuller until fall, where it's really outrageously uh, green. So. If you like this kind of video and want to continue to follow me on my journey living my best rural life in the city, please tell your friends about me, subscribe to my channel, like, share, and comment. Love to hear from you. Thank you.